What part of Fukushima do you not understand? When nuclear contamination hits the fan, plutonium is everywhere. It's in the sea, it's in the air, and we don't even have any evacuation plan. Google Fukushima, take a stand. So the two major items, shut the Avo Canyon, and yes. so bring Solartopia to Los Angeles. Yes. And we have now some, some great experts, as they said, I'll talk afterwards. Uh, my name's Paul Fry from, uh, from Fry Winery. Uh, we're actually up in Mendocino County, uh, Northern California. So what we did is try to look at what would be the, the agricultural aspects of you know, radioactive fallout, because we make organic wine and we ship it globally around the world. Um, so what we did is we used Chernobyl as a reference base because uh, the real releases from Fukushima probably won't be known in your lifetime because you'd have to measure what's called the corium and, and the actual, what was actually dispersed in the air probably won't be known in your lifetime. Whereas Chernobyl, it was actually measured as ground deposition in Europe by the International Atomic Energy Agency. This is the Chernobyl radioactive cesium ground deposition and fallout pattern over Europe after the nuclear meltdown. This is from the International Atomic Energy Agency. Uh, yeah, that's nice. Uh, the areas affected were from England, Norway, Italy, and Greece. So you can see it's a substantial ground deposition. Um, I, IAEA states economic costs at two decades at hundreds of billions. Um, so. In 2012, there was still sheep here in England that you still couldn't eat because the grass that they were consuming still made it, them too radioactive. In Norway, there's still reindeer that eat the gypsy mushrooms that you can't eat. So as you can see, it's a huge area. This is a thousand miles from England to there. Uh, next slide, please. So what we did is, my kids helped me use Photoshop, so we yanked the, the ground deposition fallout pattern from Europe and Chernobyl from the map, the official International Atomic Energy Agency map. Next slide, please. So here, here we're going to superimpose that map over the United States to exactly the same scale. So now we're, we're going to do before and after, and then we'll go back. I'll ask you to go back. So here it is before Diablo Canyon meltdown and fuel pool fires. Next slide. Okay, after. Now, could you go back, go back and forth a few times, and then stop there. So these are the areas potentially affected economically after meltdown fuel pool fire at the Apple plant using Chernobyl at the same scales. Worst case is much worse, however. If the fuel pool is burned completely, multiply the fallout concentration or fallout area by 40 times. In other words, if you were going to say best case is a single meltdown, this is best case. It could be 40 times as, as bad. Okay, next slide. Now we're going to do the same thing to California. California before the Abu Canyon nuclear meltdown and fuel pool fires. After. Okay, let's go back and forth a few times. Okay, hold it there. Um, so as you can see, Again, this is from a single meltdown. So once again, worst case, much worse. If the fuel pools burn completely, it multiplied fallout concentration or fallout area by 40 times. So here you have sort of the bread basket of America, the Central Valley of California. We'll sort of focus on the agricultural part of it coming up here. So next slide. Now we're going to do Southern California. Okay, here we have Malibu. Here we have Diablo Canyon, it's only about 120 so miles the way the crow flies up the coast. And oh. here it is after. Before, after, before, after. Okay, hold it right there. So, so again, worst case is again much worse. If the fuel pools burn completely, multiply this by 40 times or more. See, I, I use a thousand tons of, of spent fuel as the number. Um, it's more like 1,500 or possibly higher now. Okay, 2,200, some might be in dry cast. So long story short, it could actually be worse than 40 times because it turns out nature geographically made 
that what's called the LA Basin, which is everybody knows is a natural trap for pollution and particulates like radioactive fallout. So in a worst case, it would go down the coast and just build up here, and cesium-137 binds to moisture, so you have what's called the June gloom down here, you have the fog and whatnot, so you know you just have to look at uh, worst case, which could be worse than, than this. Next slide. Okay, so we're just focused on, on the agriculture a little bit, so California is the top agricultural state at 45 billion, grows about half of all the fruits, nuts, and vegetables in the U.S. California's Central Valley Basin and L.A. Basin is generally downwind from Diablo Canyon potential nuclear disaster. Both basins are geographically known as severe pollution traps. The southern end of California's Central Valley is a natural trap for nuclear fallout, as we'll see. Next slide. So this is actually an EPA map. I didn't do this one. Of the San Joaquin Valley Basin, you go to their website. It's what it's one of the most well-known bread baskets in the world. Everybody knows. I have Canyon's right here. And a, a few years ago, there was a study for the whole month of December. The air didn't move in this valley. Um, that's an example of how stuff gets trapped in there. And the LA Basin, same kind of deal. Uh, it's a natural trap for radiation. Next. So this is actually from the U.S. Uh, government, they have a system called airnow.gov uh, which shows the air quality index. Uh, the San Joaquin Valley and also as you can see the LA Basin is frequently in the top five of the worst basically non-moving air places in the country. In other words, if you're going to build a nuclear power plant, you wouldn't want to build it in a place where the air just gets stuck for literally a month in the case of the San Joaquin Valley. Next slide. So a lot of people argue, well, those maps, those I don't think they were accurate, blah, blah, blah. You know, there was a Chernobyl map and whatever. Um, but of course, Chernobyl was a single meltdown, and we're talking about in a severe earthquake, you could have the fuel pools burn, which would be 40 Chernobyls. Um, but some people still don't believe it. Like, well, it wouldn't go to Northern California. Well, this is from the Monterey Naval Research Laboratory. Um, you can look at these any day of the week. This is two days worth. This is actually... 2012, August. So Diablo's right here. So this is California. It's kind of hard to see from where you are. This is Oregon. This is Washington. This is the Eastern Pacific region. So here's California. Can everybody see that? Yes. LA, San Francisco, Diablo. So this is a 24-hour period. So pretend it was a meltdown right, right here. Okay, now just follow the moisture and the water vapor. It goes through the Salinas Valley, Monterey, San Francisco, Mendocino, um, all the way to Northern California. Okay, next slide, we're gonna see another one. This is sort of more typical, where it's sort of the west to east flow. Again, Naval Research Laboratory, uh, January 2015. Two days worth of, of pattern. So here you have Diablo again. Here's California. So just watch that pattern, and you can see, okay, that takes it right into well, basically down into here. Um, now we're going to do what, one more just to show you that it, it, it can go anywhere and everywhere. So here we are, have Dablo again, two days worth of moisture flow. That's going into the San Joaquin Basin. So basically pick any place in California, depending on if and when it happened, um, it can go anywhere and everywhere, but most likely east or southeast uh, toward us here. Okay, this is from UC Santa Barbara Ocean Physics Laboratory, and they have about six years of wind animation coming down the coast that they combined from the NASA satellites, and then this is ocean temperature. So as Harvey mentioned earlier, you know, the wind um, typically does come down this way and then it'll stall around the LA Basin. Um, so not a good scenario if you had an earthquake and meltdown. So this is PG&E's own map um, from their website, clearly showing that the Diablo Canyon nuclear plant cold water intake, which is right here, is only 300 paces from the active shoreline fault. Um, so basically, just walk 300 paces when you leave the room today, and that's how close 
the fault is. You can see the fault under the, the ocean um, because it hasn't eroded for 10,000 years or whatever, so you can actually literally see it on, standing for miles this way when you go to their website. Um, and then there's minor faults, as you can see here. There's minor fault that actually goes through reactor two, I believe, and possibly through uh, the corner of fuel pool two. And this cove actually looks like it was formed from the, the cracking of the fault. See how it's all perpendicular? So where the earth cracks is where they erode from the ocean waves. So this is, you could actually say this cove was formed because faults end there. Let's look at the potential health and economic damages after potential meltdown. The radioactive ground deposition fallout from Chernobyl were equivalent to about 400 Hiroshima bombs or two megacuries according to the IAEA. These were clearly superimposed over the previous maps. Worst case is much worse. If the have reactors in all 1,000 tons of spent fuel, even though it's more than that, completely burned, could be 40 times as high or equivalent to 14,000 Hiroshima bombs worth of fallout into California. So if someone were to tell you, well, they're having a small-scale nuclear war north of here and they're going to blow off 16,000 bombs and that amount of fall fallout is coming south, that would be kind of shocking. But reactors don't blow up like a nuclear bomb. Um, I mean, they, they do maybe like one bomb, like in Fukushima. But so people don't realize how much stuff is stored in those fuel pools. So as a general rule of thumb, every 100 tons of spent fuel when completely burned in a fire contains about 9 megacuries of cesium-137, which equates to about 5 Chernobyls every 100 tons, or about 2,000 Hiroshima bombs worth of fallout. Okay. This report was written by the former head of the NRC, Allison McFarland, in 2003. So they wrote, reducing the hazards from stored spent power reactor fuel in the U.S. by Robert Alvarez, Allison McFarland, etc. In 2013, the report showed the average U.S. fuel pool at the time contained about 400 tons of spent fuel, average age of about 15 years, contained about 35 megacuries of cesium, etc. This is sort of the numbers thing. So the unique geography of California's Central Valley and LA Basin creates a natural trap, as we talked about. Um, in a worst case, it would, it would exceed California, California's GDP of over a trillion dollars. The Central Valley of California grows much of the nation's fruits and vegetables. And we talk about exclusion zones or defined. Uh, let's go to the next slide. I'll just read it in red. What's in red? Um, go to over 500 to a trillion, 500 billion to trillions of dollars. Um, oh, no insurance company will insure against a nuclear disaster and a trillion dollar accident. Utilities have to only pay about 1% of the damages, whereas the taxpayer would have to try and cover the other 99% via the Price-Anderson Act, which limits liability to $12 billion. So in a $1 trillion accident, $10 billion is 1% of that. So these different studies showed worst case fuel pool fire in France would equal 67 Chernobyls. Estimates of $546 billion economic loss, excluding health effects, 138,000 latent fatalities and 2,100 square miles of land condemned in worst case fuel pool fire. This was this study from Brookhaven. The study's modeling was, done, was not done in California, which could lead to higher numbers if all the radiation was trapped in the LA Basin or Central Valley. Um, okay, another study by the IAEA, uh, Chernobyl, hundreds of billions of dollars over 20 years, but they said they really didn't know how much it really cost because of the collapse of the Soviet Union. That was just, you know, they, they couldn't ever get the real number. Um, another study from France, uh, it, was, it would cost up to a half a trillion dollars in a kind of a worst case example in France um, and could exceed France's GDP of four trillion dollars in a severe worst case um, if, if the, uh, you know, but nobody wants to go there. Okay, finally, a trillion dollars uh, if you had a worst case at the reactor in New York, so. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I want to point out that the, the Chernobyl accident, which happened in 1986, uh, in, a, in a rural region, a very poor country, um, has cost the governments of Belarus and Ukraine 
uh, a minimum of $250 billion each. So the numbers in California are astronomical. We can't even begin to calculate the uh, cost, the financial cost, of the damage that would happen at a disaster at, uh, at Devil Canyon. It's just uh, off the scale. Paul, thank you. That was terrific. Fantastic. <laughs> Time to make the break is now to wind and wave and solar power if we're gonna live. Nuclear power must be banned. Wrap your mind round Fukushima. It's no time to be a dreamer. Google Fukushima, take a stand. Right.